There has been a big scientific breakthrough that may bring the world one step closer to cloning humans. These two female monkeys, Wah Wah and Zhang Zhang, are seven and eight weeks old and represent the next big step in cloning. <laughs> 22 years ago, Dolly the sheep became the first mammal cloned from an adult, followed by nearly two dozen more mammals, including dogs, cows, and pigs. Scientists at the Chinese Academy of Sciences in Shanghai have now cloned a primate for the very first time. Dieter Egli is a researcher at Columbia University. I'm really astonished about that they were able to make this happen. What makes it so astonishing? More than 20 years we knew that you could clone sheep and horses and cats, but despite several attempts, everybody failed when cloning monkeys. The cloning process began with a monkey egg and a monkey fetus cell. The genetically modified process in the laboratory then develops into an embryo, which was then implanted in a monkey. Eventually, the babies were born. What's novel about this process is the nuclei were transferred from fetal cells rather than adult ones. That's different from the world's first cloned animal, Dolly the sheep, which was created from only adult cells. China is the first to successfully clone primates using this method. However, scientists are criticized for pushing ethical boundaries. The Chinese process took 127 eggs to produce two monkeys. Animal rights activists oppose medical research on monkeys. And I should point out that people may argue that the, it's not ethical to use monkey. There is a Parkinson's disease model uh, in monkey, which has been used quite effective, but it needs to use a large number of monkeys. Uh, in the United States alone, they are importing 30,000, 40,000 monkeys each year by drug company. Other researchers are celebrating how cloning primates could help preserve species on the brink of extinction. The other use is, you know, many primates are on the border of extinction. Gorillas, chimpanzees, many other primate species are under pressure. Cloning may give you a way to maintain the species. Given the progress in cloning primates, will people be next? We will never try, and we have no, I don't think there's anybody are willing to do human cloning, and the society will not permit it. But like, like any new technology, once it's appeared, there's always possibility of misuse. Parents at Carthay Center Elementary School are outraged and concerned after learning a man teaching a PE class stripped naked on campus Friday. Mark Dickerson says his seven-year-old daughter was on the playground for PE when the teacher took off his clothes. He was supposed to be helping them learn, you know, PE, run around and have fun, but he undressed and started chasing the kids while he was naked. And then the kids ducked and dodged and ran into some of the classrooms and, you know, got safe haven that way. A construction worker passing by took this video that captures part of the incident. You can see the man naked on the playground. He then puts his pants on as sirens scream in the background. Parents say they were notified of the incident Friday via robocall. A letter also went home with the kids. It reads in part, an individual began behaving in an unusual way, prompting us to contact law enforcement. As a safety precaution, our school went on a brief lockdown while officers responded and took the individual into custody. This parent says his second grader was on the playground when the incident happened. He didn't want to show us his face on camera. Um, the guy could uh, hurt one of the children, whoever this man was, rolling around naked on the floor. And plus all the kids seen his private parts. Very embarrassing, very upset. LAUSD officials say they can't comment on the incident because all personnel matters are confidential. School police tell us the man worked for the STAR program, an after-school enrichment program. They say mental health counselors were made available to the children today. Dickerson says his daughter is traumatized and the school isn't doing enough to help. If we want answers, they're not giving us answers. So 
we lose the trust in the school. We lose the trust in the school district. What are we supposed to do? Philadelphia wants to become the first U.S. city to allow supervised drug injection sites as a way to combat the opioid epidemic. Safe injection sites are locations where users can shoot up under the supervision of a doctor who can administer an antidote if necessary. City officials say the site could be a, quote, life-saving strategy and a pathway to treatment. Philadelphia has the highest opioid death rate of any large U.S. city. Two artificial intelligence programs from tech giants have beaten humans at a reading comprehension test. AI programs built by China-based Alibaba and U.S.-based Microsoft last week scored higher than humans on Stanford's question-answering dataset. The reading comprehension test was created by Stanford University artificial intelligence experts to determine if AI programs can process large amounts of information to answer questions. On January 11th, Alibaba's model scored 82.44, beating the human score to become the first AI program to do so. Chief scientist for natural language processing Alibaba called the accomplishment, quote, a great honor and said objective questions can now be answered at a high accuracy by machines. Microsoft program did score higher on the test with an 82.65, but the results were finalized the day after Alibaba's. A new feature of Google's Art and Culture app, which allows users to find their art doppelganger by uploading a selfie, is being dubbed by some as Facial Recognition Database. The new update to the app, which has been in existence for more than a year, has unleashed a frenzy of activity online as users post images of their painting look-alike. To find out if you're a dead ringer for the Mona Lisa, users have to take a real-time selfie instead of using one from your camera roll. The technology then matches your photo photo to five similar paintings that could be generally found in a museum and ranks the closeness of the match. However, amid all the hype are serious privacy concerns from some who have dubbed the frivolous selfie feature as a facial recognition database. According to Google, the feature is experimental and is currently available only to U.S. users. It states that the data from any images uploaded won't be used for any other purpose and will be deleted after the match is made. It goes on further to report that Google already uses facial recognition technology in Google Photos photos and revealed last year that AI even works on dogs and cats. Last year, privacy concerns were expressed about Apple's iPhone X Face ID, which allows you to unlock your phone by holding it to your face, and Facebook's use of facial recognition to notify users when someone has uploaded a photo of them, even if they haven't been tagged in it. The ACLU has warned that the biggest danger with facial recognition technology is its potential use for general covert surveillance systems. And The Verge has reported that Homeland Security's controversial airport face scanners could be inaccurate or unlawful. The report from Georgetown Law Center on Privacy and Technology criticizes the scope and execution of Homeland Security's biometric exit pilot program. The program, currently running at nine airports around the country, uses facial recognition technology to identify passengers leaving on international flights. Homeland Security says the program, which it plans to expand, can catch travelers fraudulently using another person's personal documents. But the report questions whether Homeland Security is vested with the power to build a program that scans Americans' faces without approval from Congress and says the program stands on shaky legal ground. The report says the agency also failed to follow proper federal procedures when creating the program. The agency, according to the report, is hoping the program accurately accepts 96% of travelers with proper documentation, but it's unclear how accurately the program can catch travelers attempting to leave with the wrong documents. It goes on finally to state that potential flaws with the biometric technology raise a number of questions, especially since no perfectly accurate biometric scanning program currently exists. And the Washington Free Beacon is reporting that China is pursuing new facial recognition programs in a push for total surveillance. Facial recognition is China's hottest new technology, but it raises issues concerning personal security as the communist government works to track individuals, create detailed profiles, and assign social credit scores. In China, banks, airports, hotels, and even public toilets are trying to verify people's identities by analyzing their faces. In addition to the technology's everyday conveniences, like apartment access, the technology is also being used by police to track and analyze individuals' behaviors. That information could be used to identify, as described in one Chinese police report, the bad guys. The aim is for the facial recognition data to merge with databases and create an identity card containing criminal and medical records, travel bookings, online purchases, and social media comments for every individual. The identity card would also include an image 
of the citizen's face. It goes on further to report that it will use facial recognition and artificial intelligence to analyze and understand the mountain of incoming video evidence and even predict crime to coordinate the work of emergency services and to monitor the comings and goings of the country's 1.4 billion people. It goes on further to report that the program ultimately hopes to give officials the ability to track where people are, what they are up to, what they believe, and who they are associated with. It would assign each individual a single social credit score based on whether the government and fellow citizens consider them trustworthy. According to tech executives working on the project, the goal of the project is to shine a light on every dark corner of China to eliminate the shadows where crime thrives. The project is titled Sharp Eyes. German academic Adrian Zen stated that surveillance technologies are giving the government a sense that it can finally achieve the level of control over people's lives. While China is not alone in using the new technologies for security, the United States, for instance, uses facial recognition to compare images from crime scenes with a national database of mugshots. China has taken a much more extensive and comprehensive approach to utilizing the technology. It goes on finally to state that China's government aims to make the video surveillance network omnipresent, fully networked, always working, and fully controllable by 2020.